Vert the Three has exploded. You sh me. Hello, and you are very welcome back to DaVinci Resolve A to Z, your one stop for all things DaVinci Resolve. And in today's episode, we're going to take a look at kind of recreating the look from the HBO miniseries Chernobyl. If you haven't been watching it, you're missing out. It's really fantastic. Great cinematography, great acting, great writing. It's just everything about it's awesome. Total fanboy. So let's take a look at the look. Um, the first thing will be setting the aspect ratio. Uh, a little tip. Um, a lot of the, especially the higher uh, budget things, uh, if you go into IMDb and there's other websites, if you go to tech specs, um, you can find quite a bit of information, including the aspect ratio. So you can see they shot a two to one aspect ratio. So typically we go timeline, April blanking and select an aspect ratio there, but two to one isn't in it. So we'll just have to do it the, uh, the, the, the proper way, I guess, which is instead of blanking, we actually set our aspect ratio. Um, so I shot 1920 by 1080, but half of 1920, so a year two to one ratio would be 960 for the height. Uh, the only thing that might catch out here if you're not used to doing this is in image scaling, make sure you're set here to scale full frame with crop. That way it'll stretch the sides out. You won't end up with bars on the side and you won't end up squishing the image and messing with your like uh, vertical squishiness because um, that's super technical and accurate. So with the aspect ratio set, let's jump into the color tab and actually do the coloring, the reason why you've actually clicked into this video. Um, so I'll just uh, go for luminance in our waveform. So the first thing is, this was shot in S-Log3. So we'll convert to Rec. 709. If you're following along with your own footage, whatever picture profile you shot in, unless it was already Rec. 709, go ahead and convert to Rec. 709 to follow along directly. Or uh, color space transform is how we're gonna do that. Or um, obviously, if you are on a different display, that's say Rec. 2020 or whatever, go ahead and convert to that. But my display is Rec. 709, so that's what we're gonna convert to. So for input color space, it's S gamma 3.cine, input gamma, S log 3, and we'll convert to Rec. 709 for color space and Rec. 709 for gamma. And we'll set luminous mapping to simple because I just think, well, it makes things a bit more easy. Alt S, I'll just use offset in the primary wheels just to do a rough um, kind of uh, adjustment of the image just to kind of get it looking a bit more uh, reasonable. So around there is probably fair. And before I go fine tuning, um, you know, the tonality of it, um, we should add the bleach bypass look. So if we look especially at this reference image, um, this is quite bleach bypassy. It's not full blown. But I think there's definitely a hint of it in there, if I had to guess. I could be totally wrong about that, but it looks like there's a hint of bleach bypass to me. And the reason I think that is because the way the contrast is looking, and then also uh, it's very desaturated, um, uh, but not super desaturated. So it kind of hints towards there being a bleach bypass look. So to do that, we'll go Alt-S and then Alt-L to add a layer node. And on the actual layer that's on top, which graphically appears on the bottom, thank you Resolve for being confusing about it, uh, we will desaturate that image. Then in the actual mixer, we'll right click and change the composite mode to overlay. Boom, Bob's your uncle, quick and simple bleach bypass. It's quite extreme. If we go back to our um, uh, waveform, you can see it's added quite a bit of contrast. So we can adjust for tonality uh, to fix that. First would be coming back here, maybe not pushing down our shadows so much uh, to save face there a bit. And then pulling down on our highlights so that we are around there. And the reason I'm setting it to around there is because um, if we look at some of the references uh, like this exterior, uh, you can see the sky is set to around this mark. Uh, same with here, except instead of a sky, it's the hottest part of the shot, which is a window. And um, so that's the hot spot. Again, it's around that mark. And same with this shot around that mark in terms of luminous value. So that's actually something that's really consistent and there's kind of no guesswork going on to that particular part of the footage. Um, so what we might do is pull it down to being around 
that value. Um, before I finalize that, what I will do, however, is come in here and adjust just how much of that bleach bypass is affecting the shot. So I might start letting some of the saturation come back in by bringing that to around there. So that's that. And then we might just lower the contrast of this a little so it's not so extreme. And with those adjusted, we'll kind of come back in here and kind of finalize the tonality a bit. Uh, only semi. We'll leave it at that for now. Um, that's at least in a linear fashion, highlights and kind of shadow set. Now I'm going to come into after the bleach bypass and do a little bit more, more work on the tonality because um, basically if I was trying to do that here, with this method I'm about to use, I'd be doing a highlight and that kind of reverts you back to this far in the grade and I wouldn't be truly seeing what I need to see. So we'll do that here. So what we're going to do is we'll come here because this is kind of our best reference image as far as our footage is going because this is a character by a window being lit by what's outside the sun and the clouds. Um, so for tonality of the face, um, this is kind of like the best reference. So if we just turn on a power window over the face, and click on the highlight and isolate that, we'll see the values here. So you can see that the hottest part of the face is only really coming to a bit over the 512 mark. Like so, i.e. the face is mid-tones and the hottest part of those mids is just around the mid-tone mark. Everything else is actually quite um, dark. So with that in mind, we will come back to our footage. We'll turn on a window. Let's turn that off for now. And we'll just, just make sure our power window is selected. We'll throw this over the face. We're not actually isolating the face here. Um, we're just doing this so we can get the, a start on the luminance values. And then we'll turn it back off so it applies to the whole image. So what this is doing is letting us see what's happening with this, uh, the uh, luminance values of the face. And you can see that we're definitely a bit hot in our hot areas. And the rest of it's not too bad. So we'll come to our curves. And with the fire tool selected, we can select a part of the highlighter, uh, highlighted parts of the face, find where it is on our toe, uh, on our curve, and start pulling that down uh, to kind of mirror what we saw in the reference image. So something like that is probably doing it quite nicely. Our shadowy kind of values could maybe come down a bit more. And uh, actually, you know what, we might leave that as a placeholder. I think it's kind of in between that needs to come down. Yeah, I think squishing it like that is a bit nice. And then also just bringing that down a little so it's not an unnatural looking amount of contrast. And now what we'll do is we'll just turn that off and see how it's affecting the rest of the image. So that's not doing anything too well to the rest of the image. It's quite a difference, but the kind of tonality is matching quite, uh, quite nicely actually. If you're looking here on the screen, if I hover over it, it changes it's kind of annoying so that image is the one we're looking at and um, you can kind of see that there's quite a similarity going on with the tones and how the shadowy parts of the face and the highlight parts of the face I might go and make it a little bit more contrasty just purely based on this shot um, so something like that, I think, is suiting this particular shot better. Um, always take reference images with a pinch of salt because at the end of the day, different location, different lighting, different cinematographer, way more talented. It's, you know, you're never going to land on exactly the same values. And just notice how our sky's values have dropped a bit low from pulling that down. So we'll just compensate for that and pull that back up to where it belongs. So around there is where those values belong. So for tonality which is a major part of any grade in my opinion, because that's what really sets the tone a lot of the times. That's pretty uh, spot on. Um, so next, we are going to address the green values here. So if we're looking at this particular reference shot, these are pretty normal um, vector scope um, green values. They're kind of sitting in this direction on our hue for our vector scope. But I'm more interested in this kind of shade of green. I just think 
it's what kind of gives it that bleach bypass look uh, and it's kind of like a dead grass it's kind of like this is closer to the affected uh, area and it's kind of grass might might be kind of dying it kind of looks like it's burnt out grass and you can see that the green values are being shifted way more towards the yellow on our vector scope so we kind of want to aim for our greens to be kind of falling more in this direction than this direction so to do that we'll come in and first of all there's a lot of, to this is a very monochromatic shot. There's not a whole lot of various uh, colors going on, um, especially after we've gone and desaturated the way we did. We're very monochrome here. So to help with, you know, separating the shades of green we need to, we'll do a power window and we'll just place it over here. Like that. And now we're kind of working in just this area of the image and we can highlight that and what we can do is we can come into the curves and go hue versus hue and we'll select those kind of tones there what i'm going to do is go really broad with this and um, make sure all our green values are getting selected and all our yellow values are getting selected maybe there's a, well about there's probably enough because there is going to be greeny yellowy values here too we don't want them getting affected too badly I'll make this more towards the primary green and um, right there and this to around there. So if we look at our vector scope, we'll start with this point first. We'll start pulling that around. Around there is probably enough. And with this point, we'll also start sending that around and see how we're pushing those, whoops, too far, way too far, colors towards that kind of part of the uh, scope. So you can see how we're kind of moving those hues around. So at first, if I just get rid of the window, um, you can see how the greens are in this direction and we wanted them more in this direction. That's what we've done. We've kind of pushed those greens hue around. Um, saturation levels are actually pretty good. What I might do to match them up is give them a little bit of extra saturation. Um, so, might go to hue versus saturation and do the same thing. So uh, we're still working in that windowed space. Now we're gonna select that hue and we'll just make sure that's a bigger selection area. And we'll just start just bumping up the saturation levels just a little bit. So that's the kind of difference we're making in those shades of green. So again, we're going more towards this image than we were this one for the color of grass. And I think that's not, not too bad. What I might do though, is just find a bit of a middle point. Maybe there is not so extreme. So I found that the last little kind of secret, and so as we have right now, we haven't really actually done a whole lot with the colors in terms of actually manipulating colors. And I found that this little last bit we do here really kind of pulls it all together. Uh, looking at this image, if we come uh, to this for the reference shot, uh, if we go to our waveform and we go to the RGB version, if we look up, uh, we, you can see that the blue channel is down quite a bit. The green is actually a bit above the red. So th that's the kind of separation you're looking at in the color channel. So it's kind of an orangey tone to the whites, the highlights of the shots. And you can kind of see that across all of them. Um, this one is uh, definitely a bluer. Uh, but, and then this one's quite blue as well. But I found that with this particular shot, and this is the one we're mimicking, and there is a tint going across the whole image as a result. Um, I found that this was where the real kind of color grade kind of came and it's a very simple, straightforward process. So with that bit of information in mind, if we come to our primary bars and work in just our highlights or the gain, if we um, pull down our blue channel a bit, about there, and a tiny extra hint of green, maybe just balance that out by not so much separation between the blue, green and the red, just that extra bit in the highlights, just that slight bit of discoloration, it brings in that kind of, you know, grungy, greeny, nuclear, dirty feel to the entire image. And it is leaking into our skin tones a bit. 
Um, you could make this adjustment in the log wheels and kind of control how much that's spilling into the mids, but I find it's actually doing something nice to the skin tones. And if we just go Alt S and put a power window over our skin tones really roughly and isolate that, and we come to our vector scope, you know, the skin tones are still very much so looking healthy and clean and, you know, technically sound, which is something that is prevalent in the color grade. So um, if we get rid of that, no, we just don't need it. That was just for, you know, checking how clean the image was. Um, and we'll go full screen. The only real color grade per se, the only real manipulation of colors is just that slight tweak to the highlights. Uh, with that tweak, I might come in and... Uh, just tone down the saturation levels of that um, grass uh, layer. If we come into the hue versus sat, we could actually probably turn that back off just to rein that back in a little bit. But um, that's that's pretty much it. Um, really, we're just converting to the color space you need to be working in, we're doing a bleach bypass. We're coming to a note beforehand and just kind of correcting for the bleach bypass and making sure our values aren't getting sent too crazily then we're adding out afterwards to adjust our tonality overall and that's where your real kind of tone to the image comes in is here that's you know you can see that in that it's you know quite a bit of adjusting and fine tuning going on the curve it's not a quick and simple linear curve then we just addressed the kind of green values that happen to be in this shot this may differ depending on the shot and then we just kind of gave it the quick look which was just kind of adding just that kind of offness to the highlights to the whites instead of being brilliant pure white we just gave it a kind of a grungy greeny yellowy tinge and that's pretty much it so hopefully you found this tutorial helpful and as always my name is Lee Dalton this is DaVinci Resolve A to Z thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video